Instagram family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today I want to share with you guys my very first radio interview. I had such a wonderful time doing this radio interview and I wanted to come here and to share it with you guys. It is absolutely lengthy, but you will receive so much information out of this particular interview. I, I just enjoyed myself and I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. All right. Conscious Vibe. And welcome to Conscious Vibe, your host, your brother, Melvin X. Graham. Back again, you know, I'm not going to turn up this weekend. I'm not. Last weekend I did. I was by myself and I had to keep the energy going because the topics that I was talking about last week, you know, I had to really, you know, jump out of my skin a bit or jump out of my body a bit and, and be something other than myself, my usual low tone self. But this week, we have a great topic, and I have a great person sitting right next to me right here. This is Sister Mar Sean Barr, and uh, she's a relationship coach, and she's a lot of other things too, which I'm going to get into shortly. However, I titled this show Relationships because there's been a lot of talks, folks, a lot of talks going on. You know, some of us say that we don't need anybody. Some of us say we're all good, you know, by ourselves. Some of us say love doesn't even exist. Some even say, my dear sister Marshawn, some would even say, I don't need to be married. Okay. But we're going to talk about it all. We're going to have a great discussion. But first, let me introduce you to my guest, Marshawn Barr, and, and let's talk about her lifestyle. Let's talk about who she is and and her what what led her to um sorry what led to her path to becoming a relationship uh, uh, coach. So sister Marshawn, let's talk about you. Um, I do understand that you're from Ohio. I am. Yes. Originally. Originally from Ohio. Yes. What uh, part of Ohio are you from? Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown. Yes, nice. Youngstown, Ohio. How? What is the? Uh, is that? A, is the very city like there? Is it rural? What is it like? Well, it, it's a, it's city like. City like in Youngstown, yes. Oh, nice. Small yeah. city, but city like. All right, nothing wrong with small. I'm a big city guy. I'm from <laughs> Washington D.C. and I live in Jamaica, Queens. Afterwards, in New York. Okay. So I'm a big city guy. <laughs> this is about as small as I've ever been right here in San Diego. Okay. But however, um, what else do you do besides relationship coaching? So, um, <laughs> very interesting. I work for Kaiser. For Kaiser. As for Kaiser a, Permanente. Uh, yeah, Kaiser Permanente, correct. And I am actually a. Um, pathology tissue technician wow and it's a fancy word uh, for saying that I dissect human disease tissue specifically most people can relate to cancer and I cut that up and so the doctor can pretty much tell you the stage that the patient is in with their ca cancer diagnosis wow so you heal people physically and mentally huh I guess I do. You're, yeah, I guess you're I do. a healer. That's, that's a good thing. That's, <laughs> I guess, I guess a, that's a great thing. I love that. <laughs> that now, now that's 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 uh, that is something. That is beautiful. In fact, um, what led you to the path of becoming a relationship uh, coach, considering that you do, you're in a career field that's very scientific. Yes. Okay. So um, I was married myself before. Okay. I was, uh, and I'm currently divorced. I'm actually engaged now, but let's get back to what led me into the relationship coach. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I was married, uh, there were just things that I was kind of tricked into. And I hate to say tricked, but as a child, I just felt like I was always around people that were married. Like all of my um, aunts, and uh, including my mother, they were all married, right? Mm -hmm. And so even those that were not married, they were all in relationships. And everybody had children, and I was always around my family with all of us having, uh, excuse me, with all of them having children. And we were just really tight knit, always together. And so I knew that that is the lifestyle that I wanted to live as far as being married. And fast forward, um, I moved out of the house. I'm really fast forwarding it. And um, I okay. met my first husband, right? And uh, everything was going good, but I never was taught how to actually love or actually taught what to look for in a relationship, how to really go about choosing a mate. And so a lot of it was me making mistakes. And um, also him, you know, it takes two. So we were both making unnecessary mistakes or, or things that could have just been corrected or 
non-existent, right? So um, after that marriage, I was thrown into the dating pool at 26 and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and uh, just being out there was just really scary and just going into the dating world really for the first time because when I met my ex-husband, we dated for a little while, but he was really the only guy that I was dating just mainly because my parents was like, no, wow. no, 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 you're not dating. So wow. he was the first guy that I actually dated and we ended up getting married. And with that being said, um, I was never, I never had a chance to see what I really wanted, what I wanted, really needed or desired. I just was kind of going along with the flow. I wanted to be married. He said he wanted to be married. So let's do this married thing and let's, uh, hopefully it goes well. And unfortunately it didn't go well. Um, I didn't have a bad marriage, but obviously when you get a divorce, that can be very detrimental um, to everybody that's involved. And we didn't have any children or anything like that. So it was an am amicable um, divorce. It wasn't bad or anything or horrific or anything like that, which I'm very glad about. But all it has to say, I uh, decided to start taking my life and my rel relationship very serious with myself, first of all, because I needed to understand who I was and love myself and everything. So... I did all of that and I read books and I went to seminars and articles and asked questions. I did a lot of research to figure out the the male mind, really. I did a lot of research and also I uh, decided to go ahead and get my certification as a health coach. And so I am certified as a health coach and here we are today. <laughs> epic journey. Now that's an epic journey. So it came down to your personal experiences Yes. and that motivated you to want to learn more about relationships. Yes also motivated you to even uh, upgrade yourself in terms of how to coexist in a relationship. Yes. And that's not something. I never thought about it that way. Maybe I should have went on that path. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, it's a journey for all of us, and of all course. of us have a different path to, to travel. So and this was mine. I just know that um, my ultimate goal is to uh, decrease the divorce rate. So that's what I would love to do while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. So... That is the, the pathway and the journey that I'm on. And so in order to do that, in order to be able to pass along the knowledge, I had to get it myself. Understood. So. Now that's something. And that's uh, something to be admired. Um, I mean, we look at, and this takes us to my first question as well, but uh, to set that up, I just want to say that we have a, a divorce rate of 70% when it comes to uh, our black marriages. Mm -hmm. However, going into my first question, which leads to marriage, now, a lot of mar marriage is influenced on a lot of different, shall I say, a lot, of, a lot of different things influence a marriage. Of course, it's based upon attraction. Of course, it's based upon, you know, how personalities mesh in terms of relationships. Mm -hmm. However, as far as the outside influences, how much of a role does parents play in the marriage, in your opinion? Um, it, it really depends on the culture, honestly. So, um... I think that parents actually play a huge role in wow. whether in whether or not um, anybody really is going to get married. But specifically in our community, I think that the parents still play a really high role in whether or not we decide to say yes or no. Is it, uh, is it based upon upbringing or is it just them, shall I say, having an influence based upon what's said and... Yeah, based upon what's said from like an advice perspective, that's what you mean? In terms of the parents having that much influence? Advice perspective, right. but I also feel that a lot of it is what we were taught by um, what we've seen. So um, your parents don't necessarily have to come out and say that they don't approve of the person verbally. But if they're giving you every... Um, Sign. Opportunity, yeah, oh, yeah. Every, every every sign <laughs> an opportunity to say that they don't like this person, they right. don't even want to engage with this person. They don't. There's nothing about their actions or their body language to say that they're inviting this person into not only your life but into their lives as well. Then we kind of shy away from or try to hide our true feelings about this person, and ultimately that can be a breakdown in our relationship. Wow, that's something. Now. Um Okay, so now we understand that parents have, shall I say, a, how can I put it, have a huge value in terms of opinion, in terms of advice, mm -hmm. in terms of the ultimate decision to get married. How much of it is the individual then? Uh, as far as per percentage-wise? Percentage uh, well, we don't, have to, we don't have to go that technical with it. Mm -hmm. I would say just, you know, based upon your experience, based upon people you know, based upon 
things you hear. Mm -hmm. Do you think parents, I mean, from your opinion, okay. do you think parents have that, that I'm sorry, because you already, you already answered that question about the parents. Let me back up. Okay. 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 <laughs> I mean, in terms of the individual uh, themselves, themselves, is, is the individual, is, is the decision, should I say, heavily weighed upon what the parents think, or does it, does it actually come down to that person? No, it comes down to the person. Okay. They, they definitely well, take into consideration. Well, they, right. they, they take into consideration what the parents are thinking, and, and because they want everybody to get along. Even if we don't say that out loud subconsciously, we want everybody to get along with our potential spouse or future spouse. And so because of that, um, we'll take what they say into consideration, but ultimately we decide if we're going to stay and run with this, and deal with whatever consequences there are ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up on a break and we're going to get back to the discussion. And we're back with Conscious Bob, your host, your dear brother, Melvin X. Graham. And with me today, my great uh, uh, host right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> my great guest right here. <laughs> You should be a host too, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, next thing you know, I'm gonna have a panel. Of no, <laughs> but no, with, with, with my uh, guest here, uh, Marshawn Barr, who is a, shall I say, physician, right? Assistant. That's, okay, physician assistant. <laughs> assistant. And a relationship coach, which is uh, our topic today: relationships. Getting back to that, but we, you know, we talk about marriage a bit. We talk about the construct of marriage in terms of the foundation, which starts with the parents, mm -hmm. which starts with our decision making. And I want to take it even before marriage. Let's talk about relationships. Okay. Now, in terms of people getting in, shall I say, relationships, how important is it to have a, that know what your intentions are before even entering a relationship? How important is that to you? Oh, that is huge. You, you absolutely have to know where you want to go in order to get there. Mm -hmm. So that, that, in, that is in every aspect of your life, but especially in relationships as well. Because a lot of people get into these relationships, or even before they enter into them, they have no idea what type of relationship that they want. And they have no idea how to go about getting into these relationships, especially making them healthy relationships. They mm -hmm. just kind of jump in and go with the flow. And that is not the way to build a healthy relationship or any type of relationship well, that is going to be sustainable. Now, what about, <coughs> you know, we have our people, black people mm -hmm. to be specific, mm -hmm. our people, they're turned off by marriage. So... To come to the table in terms of establishing a relationship with someone and having the uh, ultimate goal to be marriage, a lot of people are turned off, not a lot, well, let's just say people are turned off by that. What do you say to that? So you meet a guy, mm -hmm. he's interested in you, you're interested in him, and you pursue it further to build a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. But he comes to the table telling you that his intentions are to get married. How do you respond to something like that? How does that make you feel? Uh, as a woman, it, so so again, you have to know what your destination is or right. where you would like for your destination to right. go and be. And if, if you know that your destination is marriage and somebody that you m meet in the beginning mentions marriage, that should be a good thing. Um, but in the beginning, they're just questions. And just because the guy says that he is looking to be married, and he mentions it in that question that you potentially asked him, it does not mean that he's talking about he wants to get married to you. That doesn't mean that it's going to lead to marriage between you two. It just means that he, you ask him a question and I he like answers it. your question. I like, I <laughs> so like in it. the very beginning, we can't think that the deep questions that the person is asking us necessarily pertains between you two. Hmm. Just answer the question. That's it. <laughs> wow, that's heavy. Now, let's flip it. Now, you have men out here who don't pre that will pretty much feel the same way, don't see marriage as a viable option. But you have sisters out here, is, you know, that's the path, that's the journey. That's all they want is to be married, to have a husband. Mm -hmm. So, if a man was to tell you that, hey, you know, I don't want to be married, but I don't mind having some type of union with you or some type of agreement or arrangement in which we are dedicated and committed to each other. 
Is that, I mean, if a man was to tell you that and, and, and your goal was to be married, how would you handle that? Oh, it's time to move on. Just simple as that. Because wow. in the end, you are going to be the one who has your feelings hurt. In the end, you're, you are going to be expecting it, even if you decide to say, I'm going to stay here right now and go along with this program for right now. Because somewhere in the back of your mind, you're thinking that you're going to change his mind because you're so good, you're so great, you're bringing this to the table that you're going to change his mind. He already told you exactly where he's at. And unfortunately, a lot of us women get into these situations where we have, where we feel like we're going to change the person's mind later on. We really have to open up our ears, young ladies. Open up uh -oh. our ears and actually hear what these men are telling you. If he's telling you that marriage is not on the table and you know deep in your heart marriage is where you want to be, you need to move on. Wow. Because it's not going to happen. So, emotions, right? Because emotions take yes. over okay. at some point, right? All right, yes. So, from an emotional standpoint, where, where's that cut? Where's the cutoff line? Because you, you're enamored uh, with someone, and they're enamored with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, it's already stated up front that hey, you know, I don't think marriage is where I want to mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. How does a person deal with that? Okay, let me let me back up and 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 start here. So, anytime I work with my clients and stuff, and I tell them, you need to make your deal breakers list. And if what is on your deal breakers list is not what the brother is saying to you or is not what the sister is saying to you, you need to move on. Simple as that. Don't waste all of this unnecessary time to build these emotions. And those conversations should come within the first six dates. You should know exactly what is first. Six, that's a, oh, six oh, dates. I'm, I'm just throwing that out I there. like that. Like man. It should be in the first six dates. Then right. There is no reason for you to waste months and years of your life not knowing exactly where this relationship is going or at least have the potential to go we know that things happen in life right things happen in life but if i know that my end goal is to be married and you tell me off top marriage is nowhere in sight for you then there is no reason for me to waste my time energy or emotions <laughs> on like you it. i love it i, lo I love it i love it <laughs> okay so how about those that get cold feet? Okay. So, you're six months into a relationship. Mm -hmm. Six months. So, you're half a year there. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, either one, the man, the man or the woman would say, um, you know, I just don't see how marriage would work. But I really do, you know, enjoy your company. I really do enjoy what we have mm -hmm. as it stands, mm -hmm. right? But... Marriage just doesn't seem like an ultimate thing. Mm -hmm. Do you end it after six months when there is some invested time? Yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, six months, not much. right, 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 okay, right. six months is not like uh, <laughs> like 20 years. years. Right. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, you're still going to get your feelings hurt, right? Mm -hmm. You're still going to get your feelings hurt, but you can recover six months a lot better than you can recover five years finding out this information. So. True. Unfort it's still a, still an unfortunate situation, but you know if that is what if you if, if what he's saying now doesn't match where your heart and where you know that you want to go, it's still time to go. It really is because you're hurt now. He's not going to change his mind. He might have told you this, you know, in the beginning, right? You still decided to pursue. Now we're six months in. He's still saying marriage is not on the table. A year in, marriage is still not on the table. Five years in, marriage is still not on the table. When do you stop? So at some point, we can't blame the other person that's in the relationship. At some point, we got to take responsibility for our own choices. Oh, I agree. Yeah, and so... It's going to hurt. I'm never going to say that it's going to be easy to walk away. I'm never going to even put that out there. However, it'll be a lot easier for you to walk away six months into the relationship versus five years versus 20, and you're still not getting what you want. Because mm, then, then the end result is absolute failure if you're just not on the same accord. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I got yeah. you. So let's talk about religion in terms of religious beliefs being stated up front. Mm -hmm. How I like... Because there's a lot of things that comes into play when it comes to two people coming together to build one world together, right? Mm -hmm. Like compromise is one okay. of the, the terms that's thrown around. In terms of compromise, is religion one of the things that should be compromised when it comes to establishing a relationship? Um, so I'm going to be diplomatic here and say... <laughs> I'm not diplomatic. Uh, no, no, I'm going to be diplomatic here and say that what works for me is not necessarily going to work for you. But... 
my personal belief is that you should be on one one accord with whomever you get with when it comes to your religious beliefs because there are three of the top reasons on why relationships don't work and religion is right up there religion children and finances children. are the mm -hmm. top three on why relationships do not work out for various reasons right but um, if if you and him or not or, or you and her rather are not on the same accord when it comes to the religious beliefs that is going to always always haunt your relationship and I know somebody that's been in I know at least two people that's done the uh, the opposite re uh, religion and they always have issues and, and can, can it work it can work it can work for some people but for most people when you have two different religions um, coming together mixing together it just doesn't work out wow Wow. I, I actually agree with that. I totally agree. Um, children, because I'm going to go around the whole okay. spectrum. Okay. Children. So, if a brother has eight kids by eight different women. Ooh, jeez. Okay, keep going. This is reality. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying I know someone is that way. I'm just, I, I'm just <laughs> okay. it out. I'm okay. putting it out there because you never know who may be listening. That's right. And this is for you, brother, whoever you are out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, keep going, keep going. So, okay, you got a brother who has eight kids by eight different women, but he's never been married, but this is his, this is his reality, right? Mm -hmm. But he meets someone, and he wants to build a foundation that would lead to marriage. Okay. Is that indeed possible? I think that anything is possible. Okay, let me just flip it, and um, let me just flip the scenario. So... My mom had seven children. Okay. Right? She was married to, uh, she was married before, right? They got mm -hmm. a divorce. She met my stepdad, who was an awesome dad. He came in with seven children that was not his and made it work. They are still married today. They got married when I was 12. I am now 40. So can nice. it work? It can work. It can work. It really depends on the mindset of the people that are involved in that particular relationship of course it looks bad but how is how is he with the baby moms how okay. is he with the relationship with the children is it just something that he's bringing to the table has he now turned a new leaf on life or is he still out out there spreading his seeds to everybody yeah. Okay. Or has he reeled in his <laughs> has he reeled in his fishing net and decided, you know what, I actually want to concentrate on one person, not necessarily bring any more children in, but even if they do, it really depends on what him and that lady are gonna be speaking about and how their relationship, how they're gonna actually build their relationship together. It can it absolutely can work. And all of us make mistakes and some people make, you know, greater mistakes. When mm -hmm. when you see the children, those are the products of him being a and out there type of guy, right? right? Those are the products, so we get to see that. But we don't get to see all of the stuff that is not out in public for the public eye to see and to judge us on. And that's another thing that we have a tendency to do. We have a tendency to judge everybody, especially when we can see their baggage. When we, when we can see it, we have a tendency to judge them. But when it's in, behind closed doors or if it's my skeletons that are in the closet i'm not necessarily putting them out there on display so you can't judge me for that but all of us have issues all of us are bringing some type of baggage to our relationship it really just depends on the two people that are in that relationship and we have to get rid of the outside influences as well right but isn't, don't you think that's a hell of an obstacle though i'm like, not saying that it's not i'm saying <laughs> oh I mean, definitely but i'm saying like so for someone to have five kids mm -hmm. and then you meet someone that you like and they like you for who you are. I mean, well, from well, yeah, they like you for who for who they believe you are at least, because you don't really know who a person is until you experience things, you know, through a period of time. But on that initial meetup, mm -hmm. you know, they have a perception about you. However, you have a perception about them, and you believe something can happen there. Mm -hmm. But you know, your level of transparency has to be, you know, a hundred when you come into the table. Mm -hmm. But you have five kids. Okay. Now, is that something you mentioned up front or do you, you know, I, I, at some point say it? Yeah, I, I, well, I, here's what I'll say. I, I'm not going to put a hard, um, like you should say it on date one, you should say it on date two. Right. It definitely should be in there again. I'll throw off the first six dates. Within the first six dates, the person should know 
number one that you at least have children. We right. can go into the number later on, but they definitely should know that you have children. Uh, from, and it, yes, absolutely. Okay, and if you're being transparent, uh, I'm, uh, I would definitely say that if you have multiple baby mommies, just throw that out there. I'm not saying to put all of your dirty laundry out on the table <laughs> in the first six dates. That's not what I'm saying. But <laughs> when it comes to children, because see, I had a guy, I dated a guy like this and it didn't work out with us he actually had six children wow. with um i think it was four baby moms and he would turn me off about him and one of the reasons why we didn't work out is because he lied about it and he hid those children i just felt like if we were going to get together maybe you'll hide my child wow and i don't want to be a secret and i doggone sure don't want me ch my child to be a secret Nothing. if you have turned over a new leaf in life then we can work something out i agree i agree okay wow i Interesting. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad we now put that out mm -hmm. there. That yes, you know, you have to be transparent about everything. You do. Even the things that you think would be embarrassing, you have to bring it to the table you regardless. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, let's talk about finance. That's you mentioned that one. Okay. Um, now, if a person has a insurmountable amount or mountain high amount of debt. Okay. How? How? Okay. So if you have that much debt, should you even? consider get into a relationship why not again that's that's part of that's part of baggage as well it really is <laughs> and and all debt is not bad debt is it is it just is it uh credit card debt that that's considered bad debt is it all credit card debt is it is it student loan debt that's considered good debt plus it's all of the above if it's all of the above, then honestly, I don't, I don't, I've never seen a problem with somebody bringing debt to the table. I, I get what you're saying, insurmountable. That that's a that's a huge word right there. But most people have some debt that they're An bringing. Endless list. <laughs> now, that that might be a bit too much, honestly. <laughs> that might I mean, be. some of us aren't that much type. But I'm not saying that I am. I have my I have my own debts that I deal with. But mm -hmm. I'm saying like people out here are really in debt. A lot of people can't really make moves because of debt. You have a lot of brothers who would like to travel the world with uh, with the uh, for the woman that they would meet and want to marry, but they can't because they got a endless list of child support to pay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially a brother have six or seven kids by seven different women. You, you know there's some child support there. Hopefully, more, more hopefully, than, more, well, yeah, hopefully, yeah, you got that too. <laughs> but I'm just saying. But in any in any case, in terms of finan financials in general, so that should not be a a blockade to love or marriage it, it shouldn't it shouldn't and and here's what i'll say to that is that you have to figure out what's important to you if for for instance you brought up the brother that wants to travel if traveling is his end game whether with the family or not just speaking in general with his finances he has to now sit down and be real with himself and write down all of what's going on in his life and what he does with his money and figure a way to dig himself out of that hole it's going to take him a little while but if you really sit down and be real with yourself, you can dig yourself out of that hole. And so if as long as you are working on bettering yourself and getting yourself out of that financial crisis that you put yourself in, because what happened is that there were poor choices that were made. Right. right? And so now you're trying to better yourself. Get with a financial advisor or get with a, a credit, the, those people that help you out with the of credit course. or just whatever it is that you need to do. If you make it a priority and make and, and show that it's important to you, then you can better off work with somebody that's trying to help themselves. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. That's that's something. But in terms of uh, going back to financial mm -hmm. stuff, so that is so even if both parties are in debt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So coming to, so coming together to, to, to be a couple, to be married, and I think it's going in circles with that same question, but I think it's heavy because I really feel that a lot of relationships or not even relationships, a lot of people actually don't even seek marriage because of, you know, the X amount of X amount of debt that they've they've accumulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying no matter what the amount is that still should not stop you from pursuing marriage. It's, it should not stop you from pursuing marriage because as long as you and your partner, okay, you said both people now have both, debt, yeah, right? So you and your partner get together and you start a way to knock this debt out. It doesn't have to haunt you your entire relationship. But 
The problem is really not the finances per se. The problem is that we have our egos and we don't want to live on this minuscule amount. Oh, we still wow. want to keep all of the cars. We want to still keep shopping and racking up the credit card. We still want to keep all of this stuff because that's really what it is. We want to keep all of this stuff to live these lifestyles, to keep up with the Joneses. We're still doing that. We got to scale all of that back and, and um, live a more simplistic life so you can start knocking off some of that stuff so you can travel. So you don't have to worry about child support as much, right? You'll still have to pay it, but oh, you won't see. have to worry about paying right. child support, paying the bills. Oh my goodness, I can't pay this, I can't pay that. You got to figure out a plan that's just like you having a plan to go to the woman. You got to figure out a plan to get out of this debt so your finances could be better. So you can feel like you are the provider when we're talking about the man. You can feel like you're actually bringing something to the table. Great, great. And my last question on, on financials, and uh, I'm, I'm sort of losing my thoughts. That's why I should write stuff down, right? <laughs> you know, I, have a, I like to think I have a sharp memory. No, uh, but when it comes to financials, and it comes to live, having a meager lifestyle. So that's what we're talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're talking, well, not necessarily meager per se. I mean, not poor, but I get what you're within saying. your means, right? Um, so my thing is, that's a turnoff for a lot of people. And men are usually in the driver's seat in terms of finances anyway. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. when it comes to a man marrying a woman, it's like the man has to be able to be the provider. Yes. That's, how I, that's the way it's... it's should I say culturally structured in most cultures? The man has to be the provider. For a man to have a, I don't know, $15 an hour job mm -hmm. and a sister that he's trying to, uh, should I say, get with or date or marry mm -hmm. makes more than him. Okay. Can a man, here we go. Now we get to my question. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I, had, I, had, I had to build that build it up. up. <laughs> well, I'm there now. <laughs> Can a man be a provider in the household? Now we're talking marriage. Mm -hmm. Can a man, I hate to just jump like that, but we don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But can a man be a provider to a woman that makes more than him? Yeah, simply. He can. So most, most people think of provider as just finance. Based on finance, right. But it's not, when you're in a relationship, see, we, we can't compartmentalize these things. Mm. The relationship is intermingle the entire time so you can't just say that he can't be a provide provider if he's not bringing the finances to the house he could be a provider in some other aspect maybe he's the handyman <laughs> no seriously no, I got you. Maybe, maybe the sink is broken you don't have to worry about spending extra money maybe he could fix the sink or fix the vacuum or fix your computer you know that there, there is another way to be a provider other than just finances and if you are getting with this brother and he has a plan, $15 is not where he's going to stay. So mm. you can't just look at today what he's doing. You have to see what his future is. And I know that I'm, I'm going a little bit further, no, 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 right? You're, you're, but, you're on it. But, I love it. But, but, you, but you can't just look at $15 today. If he has a lot of things that are on your uh, deal breakers list, like knocked off, as in he's meeting them, right? He's meeting what's on your list. And the only thing that he's not meeting is this money aspect. You gonna throw the brother away because Ooh. of the money? Ooh. Like, come on! That that's not that's that's not the relationship that you're looking for. And if you are dealing with a person, male or female, that is a hundred percent locked in on your chains, run. Oh, I like that. Um, okay. So there's always like intangible statue or should I say incidental there we go that's the term I'm looking for incidental things and then when I and to give an example of what I mean by incidental to my to my listeners like you have a restaurant and beverages are incidental like you have to have water you gotta have <coughs> drinks right mm -hmm. for right to, to have a restaurant incidental things that should that should be in a relationship like and this this deals with finance and, and marriage in general or relationships in general should a man have a car does a man need a car to marry a woman or to be with a woman in general? No. Does Doesn't. a man have to have a house to be married? I'm going to make sure that I'm understanding this. That all of these questions are to be married. Right, because I thought there's okay. like, because okay. don't women have, see, now I'm going to ask you this question. Okay, sure. Don't women have a to-do, not to-do, a must-have list? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Should a man, does a man, should, should I say, 
does a man have to have a car? Does he have to have a house? And does he have to have a balanced bank account? Oh, wow. Okay, I'm scratching my head on all of this because <laughs> <laughs> if, again, yes. if yes. these are the things that you are focusing <clears throat> on when you first meet the brother, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> to me personally, it's better if the person doesn't have it right away. He's working toward getting it. Mm-hmm. Because then you have to worry about who's been in this house before. Who's been in that bed before. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know you're going. <laughs> if Go he ahead. does have a car. if he, I'm sorry. If he does not have a car, you can still respect the guy that doesn't have a car if they're upfront about it. Okay, I, got an, I always have a story. Got a guy that I was dating before. He never told me that he didn't have a car. He rode the train over to my place. He kept saying, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. So I'm not thinking nothing about me having to drive because of the way he's setting up our dates. Nice. So when, when he came to get me, he was walking. And then he, he came to get me to get in my car. And so it wouldn't have been a big issue if I knew. Up front. That I, right, right. Mm. If I knew up front. But don't hide said information because it's a huge turn off. It makes it look like you are the one who's insecure about where you are in your life. And and that doesn't mean that you're never going to get a car. But if the way you set up the, the potential date, like <laughs> I'm coming to get you, I'm coming nice. to get you. Nice. And then when you get there, we get into my car. You will never see me again. Yeah, you know what? Now, that's, that's pretty bad. And that's bold of any brother to do that. Well, it was a brother that did it. Really? <laughs> right here in San Diego, okay? Ouch, ouch, ouch. Hopefully that brother's not watching the show. <laughs> well, if you are, but... don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's something. So, wow. Yeah, I think that would be something you have to be upfront about. If you're not driving or whatever the scenario is, you have to at least be able to say up front, you know, meet me at a certain location, maybe. I don't know. I mean, yeah, again, you don't have to put all your baggage out there. But if he would have just said, let's meet at said restaurant, I would have never known that he didn't have a car, at least right then. But the way that he went about it was a huge turnoff. Wow. And so, no, you don't have to have the car in the beginning. No, you don't have to have the house. And the bank account should not even be discussed in the beginning. Even if you happen to see brother drive up in this fancy car, insert whatever you think is fancy. You still should not be discussing what is out there because a lot of us, unfortunately, we have this um, uh, where we're putting on a show for people. Mm. And we driving these nice, fancy cars. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing that you drive a nice, fancy car, but a lot of it is for show. Yeah, a lot. I mean. You don't even have gas in the gas tank for this fancy car. The only thing I see is the fancy car. That should not even be discussed at all. Maybe, for all I know, it was a gift. I mean, in our community, you know, you just, you just never know. I you know. out there showboating with this ve- with this vehicle that you had no means to purchase at all. Wow. See, my thing is, too, is that I noticed that this first impression thing, which I'm a fan of. I'm, I believe in the first impression. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. believe in, you know, the first date or whatever the case may be. You know, of course I buy flowers. Of course I would even go as far as paying for, for dinner, even though I think that's suspected. But that's another, that's another topic. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that's just, that's just how, that's just how Brother Melvin wrote. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I would definitely get flowers. I'll definitely pay for dinner. That's just how. That's just, you know, something I do up up front. Uh, but the first impression thing. Some people overdo it. Some people spend, you know, beyond their means to go mm-hmm. to a five star dining. Mm-hmm. You know. Maybe they would, you know, rent a damn limo. I mean, I, you never know. Some people, people go that, get that extravagant. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? In terms of trying to make a first impression. But, you know, beyond all that, you know, fan, uh, I'm sorry, glamorous stuff, how important is a, a first impression? I'm not talking about, you know, having things or whatever, but just making an impression in general. How important is that? that that's actually really important because... I know it's cliche, but you never get a second time to make a first impression. You really mm-hmm. don't. So you really have to put your best foot forward uh, with the person. And that's really just about grooming in general or being on time or doing what you say that you're going to do. Right. You say that you're going to be there 15 minutes early, be there 15 minutes early. Or if you happen to be running late, that's not the end of the world. But communicate that to the person that's waiting for you, because 
you you just you just okay so i know that um sisters do this sometimes which oh. is we'll say that we're on our way we'll say that we're on our way and we're not even getting dressed and then have the nerve <laughs> to be mad at the guy for being mad that you are late like that's just very inconsiderate Mm. Or you say that you're on your way and you haven't left at all. Or you say that you're five minutes away. Man, you have to be consistent because the very thing that you don't want to be done to yourself is the very thing that you're dishing out. But you can't handle it when somebody else is doing it to you. And that's, that's not the way that you should go into any relationship and, or even think that that's fair to do. Wow. No, wow. Now you're hammering on some real good points there. No, no question. But in terms of expectations what expectations should we have coming to the table on the first on, the, on should I say on the first meetup that leads to the first impression what are, what are some of the expectations that should be already on the table well again <laughs> um, let me let me make sure that I understand are you going into where the where it should be t potentially going right. like if this is leading into a relationship Okay, I, that, let's say that for the second part. Okay, okay. But what I simply mean is up front, what should be the expectation? It's up front, initial meetup. Uh, <laughs> that the person, again, is on time. On that time. they're well-groomed. Right. Well-groomed. And, and, and that there's something to actually speak about. And not necessarily serious questions per se, but you want to have yeah, something to that. actually speak about so you can see if you guys are actually going to have a connection with one another. Because just because you've seen the person... Physically, y'all exchange numbers wherever you met, that's one thing. But to get in front of them and only have the looks to look at, that's very boring. I agree with that. And, and in the past, I've been on a date before where it was like awkward silence. Is that an indicator of go home? Not <laughs> okay. Wait. So, so give me a little bit more before I. Oh, you got to give me a little bit go. more to work with. <laughs> Bingo. Here we go. So you on you on a date? I'm so oh, all right. I'm talking about me. Mm -hmm. This happened to me before. I'm not saying no names. All right. Listen up, so y'all. Don't get mad at me. Whoever you, if you if you think it's you, it's probably not you. So don't even think that. All right. So <laughs> I was on a date before years and years ago. Anyway, so it don't really matter. Uh, years and years ago, and um, there we are. We had it. We had dinner, and um, you know, it, it was actually okay at first. She looking at me, I'm looking at her. You know, you know, you look, then you eat, then you look, then you eat, then you look, then you eat. Then you, you know, you throw a couple of lines out there. You know, you're talking about this for a little bit, and then like after a while, the nervous energy sort of struck, and it's just awkward sounds. It was dead. Mm -hmm. It was like nothing to talk about. Is that an indicator to go home? No. No, it, it's not. <laughs> Nervous energy is going to get in the way, unfortunately. But a lot of it, no, no. the answer is still no. Even it's awkward, not, even like, even like 10 minutes of awkward silence. Now, that's wait not, a minute. 10 minutes, that, that, I'm sure it was not 10 minutes. Well, it man, it felt well, like 10 minutes. It sure as hell did feel like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain it wasn't 10 minutes. It could have, it may have been longer, but. Come on. I can't remember. Okay, okay, sure. <laughs> but but that's not an indicator to go home. What it is an indic so so okay, so let me let me just say that a lot of times we have a tendency to throw in the towel so much sooner oh, than gosh. we need to. Gosh. Right? So the first time that we meet somebody or even the second time, because we're trying to make this really great impression, we have a tendency to maybe even say something or do something that kind of knocks us off of where we were trying to go with it and then we kind of run into this dead silence or awkward silence spot that you were speaking about <laughs> but that doesn't have to be the end of it you could you could politely just make a joke <laughs> like there is something to basically break the ice again and let the person know that it's okay that things weren't you know whatever it was that made the awkward silence last so long there is a way to bring it back around when you guys are laughing and joking now because this is real <laughs> stuff we're talking real life because mm -hmm. this is true mm -hmm. like there's a lot of like should i say initial meetups first dates mm -hmm. that end like weirdly because of awkward silence like like you may even try and it might not even land you know what i mean like it could be anything. It could be like, uh, so are you enjoying the food? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think about going to see a movie later today? Mm-hmm. Maybe. I mean, it's just nothing there. It's not, oh, I see. They're not giving you something substance. to work Oh, oh okay. To work so with. They're not even giving you the one-word answers with the little noises. That cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but some of it, I, I 
think it ha so. this happens though. This actually happens. I really do believe that some of it is the nervous energy, but I also feel that we're reading into things a lot more than we need to be reading into them. Oh. Yeah. That that right. no seriously. No, we're, 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 okay, okay. We're reading into things a lot more than we need to because you don't know who really is across the room from from you when you are first meeting them. So we really have to give people a chance to really get get into our lives a little bit more. I keep saying those six dates, but even four dates, you got to give people a chance to be able to let down their hair per se, to let some of that nervous energy go. And a lot of it is um, the com comfortability level. If you are not comfortable with the person or if, you know, or if the person is not comfortable with you, there will be a lot more um, awkward silences. What is it that you guys or where is it that you guys are not? You're missing the connection somewhere, which is why the awkward silences are starting to occur. Oh, I and for for that was a long length of time too. And, and, and I'm trying to tell you, I can hear a pin drop. And I'm in a restaurant. Oh I can I can hear a pin drop. I'm not lying when I say it, but it's okay. It's the past. But um, I know we're coming down to the end to the home run stretch here. Um, well, damn, I actually forgot. It was a very important question oh, I was going to throw in. No, it's on me. Uh, it's okay. Um, in terms, oh, I got it. When it comes to, uh, see, that's what, I, that's what I love. When you have chemistry in mm -hmm. terms of the discussion of a show, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's beautiful because then it's like there's so many like questions circulating in your mind, <laughs> you got to get them all out. But no, uh, one more question that I have you close this out. Okay. Um, in terms of discussion, how important is discussion in terms of building a relationship? Have, being able to, to, to speak, speak on multiple topics for someone or, or share uh, various things the types of discussions. How important is discussions in terms of relationships? Oh, uh, discussions and communication. Communication, I meant to say. That's it's, what I should it's okay. Communication right. and discussions absolutely are is one of the biggest things. This is even astronomical in a relationship. You have to be able to ask all of the questions that you need to ask, even if it's something that's not politically correct. Or even if it's something that you know your partner does not want to hear. We should get into the, these relationships where we're able to say anything. Anything. With, and and I, I won't even say within reason. You should be able to speak to your partner about anything. Even if you know that they're not going to be happy about the conversation. Because when you are holding these things in, this is where, um, this is going to take us too long. But it's, um, okay. Be, it's going to take us into areas of maybe even infidelity where you feel like you need to go outside the home to seek whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's conversation, companionship, even um, sex or whatever. So we have to be able to open up our mouths and speak what is on our minds to our actual partner. Because if you, if you can't communicate with your partner, then why are you there? Mm. Why are you there? Mm. Like, that is such a lonely good relationship. Point. Good question and good point. Yeah, that's such a lonely relationship. You have to be able to do it. I mean, I do it even in my own relationship, and he does it with me. There, there are times that I don't want to hear exactly what he has to say, but I want him to feel good enough to be able to, to express those things to me. I know exactly where he's at. He knows exactly where I'm at, and we can say anything in a respectful manner to each other. We don't have to be disrespectful to one another to get our point across. But you have to be open-minded to actually hear what your partner has to say. Your platform has to be well enough for them to feel comfortable enough to come to you and say whatever it is. Doesn't mm -hmm. Literally, it doesn't matter what the conversation is. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you so much, Sister Marshawn. Great information. Thank you for having me. Of Thank course. All right, family, welcome back. So I'm glad that you guys have stuck around to this point and you have really enjoyed the interview today. Definitely go ahead and give me thumbs up. Hit the red subscribe button or the icon with my lovely face because I love sharing these tips and tools with you guys because here at I Love Me, 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 I am supplying you with the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. I will see you in the next video. Two-finger salute.